Hey, let's talk the projects right now. This is my second video I'm pulling, pushing out today. Let's talk about the projects. So, does poverty mean that somebody should not have kids? That's what we're looking at. And this is, you know, like a Hitler mentality. So, I'm on different social media and we've talked about, you know, big families recently, um, other people too. Talking about overseas, big families don't always have a lot of money, but many times they're comfortable. So how much money is the question does it take to have kids? And many times you can do this almost for free. You really can. And I know people um, don't want to go through that. And I know for me, um, living off of just one income, um, without a real good job is really difficult. So without a high paying job, you are going to suffer sometimes and it's okay. Um, sometimes you have to learn how to be resourceful enough to get through those hard times. And many times, um, it's okay to suffer. It's okay to go without. It's okay to realize that all your bills are not going to be paid. Um, when you're poor, your bills are not going to be paid. It's okay to get help. And when you look at the big picture and you're thinking, geez, should I have a kid or should I abort the kid? And your choices are have a child and, you know, just let your bills get behind that is a much better choice than having an abortion. Bills come and go. Um, I had situations where I had to make the landlord wait for his money. Um, being in a trailer, he had to wait. And he would, you know, we had an understanding. If I got a little bit too far behind, he would give me an eviction notice. And luckily, in a trailer, there's certain um, laws that, you know, you have to, you, you can't, evict right away at least where I live and you have to give people like you know 30 days or whatever to get their rent caught up so many times when you're putting food on the table some of these bills are going to have to wait and I always felt like food on the table and I'm not talking about luxury I'm talking about basics at certain times would always be the priority um, another resource I had used was I went over to the city uh, many times when I got behind with the bills, um, having my kids, I went over to the city and I said, hey, we could use help with this and this and this. And, um, you know, they always had a pretty strict agenda when it came to helping people out. I mean, even looking at your grocery bill and looking at, okay, where, where are you spending the money? Uh, looking at your receipts and, you know, that's when it gets really tight and you're looking at pennies to be able to buy things. And they are willing to help you. Unfortunately, something that happened in my life is um, because we lived in a trailer, um, there was some kind of agreement that if you ever sell the trailer, from my understanding, you would owe this back. And if you rent... You know, if you have any property, they'd like to be paid back is what I was told. But if you rent, don't worry about paying them back. So with our trailer, it was really old and we didn't get anything out of it. The thing got torn down because it was so old. So we never heard from them. We never heard that we owed them money until we actually were ready to move. And then we heard um, that there was this lien against it and we, you know, we would have to pay that. And, you know, that's something that you got to be really careful who you get help from because that's something we were not aware of for years. And we lived there for years and nobody had said anything. Um, but don't be ashamed to get help. And back to my family being in the projects, um, my grandmother had 10. And I always think of that movie of It's a Wonderful Life. When you think about how certain people in your life 
came into your life for a certain purpose. Um, and, you know, when on that movie, It's a Wonderful Life, you know, he had wished he had never been born, the main character, and he was shown what life would have looked like if he had never been born. And he really ended up being grateful at the end of the movie and so thankful for what he had. And many times if we change that mindset and be thankful for what we do have instead of what we don't have, we can really um, change things in life. So as I said, my grandmother, I mean, she loved and adored me. Her first granddaughter, very favored. Um, favored above, I think, even her kids. Um, and I did have one uncle who at one point was jealous of me at one point because she did favor me. And of course, favoritism is not the best thing to do when you're raising a family. Um, something I've tried not to do myself is to be picking favorites. But um, was there, there was a lot of issues. I mean, there, there were a just tons of chaos and a lot of things happening. My grandfather worked three jobs. Um, everyone knew my grandfather. Wherever he went, everybody knew him. He had conversations with people wherever he went. Um, but unfortunately, this really affected their marriage. They had no time together. And, you know, from there, you know, women do need men who are loyal and consistent and attentive to them. And when that goes into marriage, it makes it harder to live your life as a married couple. And then, um, you know, the kids had a very strict um, upbringing um, with a lot of different things going on. But you know what happens is many times when people have had a really hard life, they end up overcoming. They end up being survivors. So to say, oh, you know, abortion's okay because the kid's going to grow up suffering or having a hard life. Um, it doesn't justify abortion. You know, we have a God who's in control of everything. And if he chooses to put us in a particular family or he chooses to allow certain things to happen, that is his choice. And we also have a choice to make with what God gives us. We can choose how to respond we can choose to be thankful we're alive. Um, we can be thankful that we just have food on the table. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things that can happen. A lot of bad things can happen to people. But it doesn't mean that you can't heal later and you can't change your own life once you're grown up. So I want to throw that out there. Um, we're just getting a lot of different debates and I'm hoping to um, just be able to debate this some more with people and no one has the right to take someone's life. So thanks for joining me. If you like what I'm, you know, pushing out here, you like some content, subscribe and, you know, hit that bell. And I'm looking forward to moving um, forward in even a stronger way and <clears throat> hoping Planned Parenthood gets shut down because I do believe they are the ones who are the perpetrators um, with this and deceiving girls, telling them, you know, the RU486 is not a big deal. You're just going to feel a little discomfort. Uh, doctors not telling girls exactly what's happening. Um, you know, we've got a lot of adults doing this stuff to kids. So there are troubled youth out there and we really need to be there and help them out.